In the last meme cards video, the comment section was ablaze with everybody talking about their favorite memes in Yu-Gi-Oh! And there were so many great suggestions that we decided to make a part two. So in this video, we're going to be covering the best meme cards that we missed, their origins, how they're used in the community, and even how some of them have managed to impact the competitive metagame. And descending from the heavens at number 10 are the Egyptian God cards. Obelisk the Tormentor, Sly for the Sky Dragon, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. But if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh memes, you might know these cards better as Slifer the Executive Producer, Mega Ultra Chicken, and the god that Kaiba would sacrifice in order to summon the Blue-Eyes White Dragon and change his future. In the case of the Executive Producer and the Mega Ultra Chicken, these memes were brought to popularity by the Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series, a parody of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime made by Little Karibo that gave funny nicknames to all of the Egyptian god cards other than Obelisk. Slifer was named the executive producer in the Abridged series as a nod to the fact that in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, Slifer was renamed from Osiris the Sky Dragon, which references an actual Egyptian god, to Slifer the Sky Dragon, which is a reference to Roger Slifer who co-produced the four kids anime series. And this official English translation of the card has stuck to the point where Slifer the Sky Dragon is still named Slifer to this very day. Ra, on the other hand, was named Mega Ultra Chicken as a reference to Ultra Mega Chicken from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And while Obelisk wasn't renamed in the Abridged series, it still has its own iconic memes associated with it, such as the previously mentioned Kaiba Sacrificing a God, a reaction image that comes with the subtitle Japanese dub of the original anime that's often used with funny captions, oftentimes even replacing the word God with another thing to be sacrificed. In fact, all of the Egyptian gods actually have quite a few memes associated with them. In the previous video, we talked about how iconic the Dark Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon, and Exodia pieces are to people's childhood in the game's early identity, and Egyptian god cards are no different, especially since, in the anime, they acted as the ultimate boss monsters. Because each of the Egyptian gods held an absurd amount of power that just wasn't present on monsters in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh! So when the Egyptian god cards were showcased in the anime as monsters that were unaffected by card effects that could reach impossibly high attack points, they submitted themselves as some of the coolest cards in the game, and ones that people were desperate to try for themselves, making them so well loved to the point where to this day you will see the Egyptian god cards referenced in both Yu-Gi-Oh! and non-Yu-Gi-Oh! memes since they're such an important part of people's childhood, to the point where, just like with Exodia, people are willing to play entire decks whose sole purpose is just to try to bring out the Egyptian gods. However, those players will often find themselves losing quite a few duels, because in the actual card game, the Egyptian gods never really reach the same status as their anime counterparts, since they were heavily downgraded and oftentimes not worth the three tributes you needed to summon them. But what the Egyptian god cards represented is still a really important part of the game, even though they don't see much play themselves, because in the modern era, there are a ton of different boss monsters that can show you what it feels like to bring out a god. Some people will even come up with summoning chants for their favorite boss monsters, just like how you had to know the ancient chant in order to properly summon the Winged Dragon of Ra. While the god cards rarely see actual play, there's no doubt that they've cemented themselves in the hearts and minds of a ton of different players. And even if you don't care about the Egyptian gods themselves, it's pretty likely that you have a monster that you cherish and revere as the ultimate boss of your deck. And summoning to number 9 is Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic, the boss monster of the Endymion archetype that's managed to reach meme status alongside Nirvana High Paladin due to their ridiculously long card text. Power creep is a normal part of games, and Yu-Gi-Oh! is no different. The cards available have grown steadily more complex and more powerful since The Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon, but for anyone that's used to the simplicity of cards like Pot of Greed or Monster Reborn, it's a shock to see just how complicated cards have become. And Endymion and Nirvana High Paladin are idols of complexity due to them having the most text out of any cards in the game, which makes them appear really complicated and difficult to parse at first glance. So much so that both of these cards were memed on for a while to show how wild the modern game has become. Nirvana High Paladin is even stated as one of the biggest reasons MBT and RJ's descendants went back in time to start the junior journey to stop Yu-Gi-Oh from being so complex. And it's honestly hard to blame them. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh is fairly difficult to understand and sometimes incredibly convoluted. And sometimes even reading the card text doesn't give you full understanding of what the card does. But in order to survive in the Yu-Gi-Oh metagame, you need a good understanding of both your cards as well as your opponents, and not knowing small details can lead you to making some big mistakes. And it's these mistakes that have also led to the idea that Yu-Gi-Oh players don't read cards. Because whether or not you're a pro or a casual player, there's probably been a time when you've tried to pop an indestructible boss monster, or you've tried to ash a Cherubini, or maybe you've tried to negate your opponent's normal spell with an MST. And when those things happen, some players will joke with others that they can't read because they missed something vitally important that made them misplay, and due to how complex the game is, this happens so frequently that Yu-Gi-Oh players not reading is now just a universal way to lightly poke fun at others or to laugh at yourself for making mistakes. 
But if you don't want to get caught off guard by these small but game determinative errors, it's important that you read cards carefully and understand their role in the particular decks. So for anyone that hasn't yet, let's read Endymion together. Endymion is a level 7 dark spellcaster that happens to be a pendulum monster. This means that you can either summon it out on the field as a monster, or you can activate it in the pendulum scale in order to gain access to its pendulum effect, and use its scale for a pendulum summon. As a pendulum scale, Endymion is treated similarly to continuous spells, and actually only has one effect, but it's split into multiple parts. By paying a cost of removing 6 spell counters from your field, you can special summon Endymion from your pendulum zone. Then you must count the number of cards you control that you can possibly have a spell counter on them, because not all cards can have them on them, they have to have an effect which says they can, and destroy up to that many cards on the field. Then, if you do that, you must place a spell counter on Endymion for each card that was destroyed, and this effect has a hard once per turn, so you can't use it multiple times with different copies. Essentially, if you can pay the cost of 6 spell counters, Endymion has the potential to be able to destroy a ton of cards on the field while Special summoning himself out from the scale which makes this effect amazing for wiping away your opponent's board to clear the way for an OTK. As a monster, however, Endymion's second effect box applies instead. This text box has three effects. The first one can be activated whenever a spell or trap card or effect is activated, and allows you to return any card you control that has a spell counter on it to your hand to negate the activation and destroy that spell or trap card. Then, you can place spell counters onto Endymion equal to the number of spell counters that card you return to your hand had. This is a huge benefit, because while Endymion has a spell counter on it as a monster, your opponent can't target it or destroy it with card effects. And if it's destroyed by battle while it has a spell counter on it, you get to add any normal spell card from your deck to your hand. So, next time you're up against an Endymion strategy, you can be safe in knowing that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player that actually reads. Although, this is pretty unlikely to happen, since it's been forever since Endymion and Nirvana High Paladin have actually seen competitive play. But, the meme of Yu-Gi-Oh players not reading will forever be an eternal concept, so long as new cards with new weird details and rulings continue to be released. Just make sure to ask judges about things you need to know. Sharing into number 8 is Necro Valley, a representative of the Gravekeeper's archetype, which became a big meme thanks to Farfa, one of the biggest streamers in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. You see, this particular meme was coined during a Twitch stream, as Farfa lamented at how bad most Yu-Gi-Oh memes in the modern era are, since a lot of the most popular memes are just reaction images with some kind of caption. So, to make fun of these terrible memes, Farfa created one of his own with an image of Spongebob seemingly angry that his opponent has drawn a good card a feeling that every player can sympathize with. And then, to make fun of how overused and overshared memes were, the image was compressed, deep-fried, and given a number of different modifications and watermarks, and was made to be so unfunny that it came around to actually being funny again, which resulted in this abomination that coined the iconic phrase, share if you play Gravekeepers. Now, if this phrase had been about any other deck, it might have just died with this meme. But a number of different factors kept this meme alive and even made it entirely synonymous with the Gravekeepers as a deck, to the point where some people will actually just call the deck Share If You Play. The biggest factor though was that at the time this meme was released, Gravekeeper was a decently viable rogue strategy due to its synergy with Dragoon, and because it was capable of shutting down the graveyard with Necro Valley, which easily countered decks like Tri Brigade and Drytron. And because people were likely to see the deck, it meant they would just casually say the phrase Share If You Play Gravekeepers as an inside joke to reference the meme. This was further accelerated as other streamer and content creators, such as MPT Yu-Gi-Oh, would spread the meme to their chats and culminated in an incredibly funny Twitch clip where MBT managed to defeat Gravekeepers in a tournament, capping off his victory with a loud and proud, share if you play Gravekeepers. Overall, it's really funny how a joke to make fun of bad memes ended up becoming a widespread meme in and of itself. And while the opportunity to say this meme has become a lot rarer due to the Gravekeepers no longer being viable, it's still ingrained in the minds of a ton of players as an almost Pavlovian response to Necro Valley. And Slytherin into number 7 is Predaplan Diverte Anaconda a card that reached meme status due to how many problems making Verte can solve. You see, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a difficult game filled with a ton of different options and choices, whether it's deck building or while you're actually in a duel, and in order to win games, you have to build the right end boards and play around hand traps and board breakers your opponent likely has. But in some situations, you don't really have a choice and you're forced to play a line that is likely to lose to an opponent's interruption, leaving you with nothing. And in these situations, it's important to have a plan B in mind in case your starter is Valored. And for a lot of decks, the best backup plan available was to play Verte Anaconda, alongside Dragoon or DPE in their extra deck, since in order to get access to these powerful boss monsters, you just had to commit two effect monsters to the field to link into Verte. So, if your main play was interrupted, you could just make Verte. Or if you wanted to play around certain hand traps, you could just make Verte. Or if you had no other play, you could just make Verte. This culminated into King Scarlet Yu-Gi-Oh! creating an entire song dedicated to Verte's problem-solving capabilities. 
which show that no matter what situation you were in, you could just make Verte in order to get out of it. And because of how applicable Verte was to almost every situation in Yu-Gi-Oh, people started using it to apply to problems that existed outside the game, just like in King Scarlet Song. If you crash a car or were in a fight, you can just make Verte in order to get out of the situation and solve all your problems. As a result, for a long while, Make Verte was spammed in the chance of a ton of different streamers, whether they were struggling with what to do or interrupted simply because it was the easiest and funniest solution available. However, due to Verte's banning in the TCG and OCG, it's a lot harder to use them to solve all your issues, and now decks have to rely on other Plan B options if their main plans are interrupted. But if you're really desperate to solve a problem, Master Duel still has Anaconda legal, allowing you to make Verte whenever you please. Blackwing Shura the Blue Flame has an impressive 1800 attack stat, but is definitely weaker than your Stardust Dragon, until the damage step. Because flying into number 6 is Blackwing Kalut the Moon Shadow, the archetypal honest for Blackwings that became a huge main thanks to Simo and Nim Nim's Yu-Gi-Oh progression series. This series has actually spawned a ton of different Yu-Gi-Oh memes, from the Secrets of Eternity copypasta to hating on dual monster staples. And one of the most successful and most played decks of this particular series was Blackwings, which was piloted by Simo so often that, for fans of the Progression series, Blackwings grew into meme status in a number of different ways, and had fans begging for Nim Nim to find a strategy to beat it, or for Simo to play literally anything else. There was just one big problem. Blackwings were just too overpowered in such a limited format, so it was almost impossible for Nim Nim to beat the strategy, and Simo wasn't incentivized to play anything else. Because Blackwings are capable of swarming the field with a ton of bodies, had amazing generic support, and can beat over pretty much any monster in the game thanks to both Sorogo the Dawn and Kalut the Moon Shadow. And in a ton of pivotal moments where Nim Nim was about to win a duel, Simo would build up suspense before uttering the immortal phrase, damage step, and surprise Nim Nim with a Kalut from the hand to crush his chances of breaking his losing streak. The great part about this meme is that while it originated from Kalut, it can actually be applied to a ton of different situations involving damage step, because the best part about the meme isn't the fact that it's Black Wings, it's the shock that comes from having just the right card you'd need to beat over an opponent's oppressive boss monster, whether that's the effect of a Kalut, an Honest, or even a Forbidden Droplet to modify attack values. This is especially terrifying for your opponent because the damage step is incredibly restrictive in the types of effects that you're allowed to activate. So, if your opponent cockily lets you attack your weak monster into their expertly noir, thinking they've won the duel, you can smile and evilly recite damage step and drop your attack modifier in Noir won't be able to do anything to stop it, leaving them utterly helpless and distraught as their ultimate towers is being over by a tiny bird. The damage step is a cruel and unforgiving place, and Simo's progression series showed that off quite often, with Simo's words now being ingrained in the minds of duelists everywhere whenever they have an effect that can be activated in the damage step to turn the tide of a duel. Intruding into number 5 is Ojama Country, a field spell belonging to one of the most aesthetically ugly and strange archetypes in the game, the Ojamas. Now, Ojamas have always been a bit of a meme in the Yu-Gi-Oh community ever since they were first introduced, because in the anime they acted as comic relief as the dual spirits for Chaz Princeton by annoying the Chaz in funny ways. And their playstyle suits that status, as the deck's original playstyle was based around blocking your opponent's monster zones with either zone blockers or tokens, and so some duelists would dedicate themselves to playing wacky or wild Ojama decks and variants either because of the love of the GX anime, or because they wanted to play a funny meme deck that can win duels in a strange and unique way or unique until Kastira came around at least. But the reason why Ojama Country is on this list is specifically because of its artwork. You see, Ojama Country depicts a normal Ojama village with several different iconic Ojama monsters that have been released for the archetype, with Ojama yellow, green, black, blue, and red all getting into some wacky antics. But as well as the currently released Ojamas, Ojama Country implies the existence of several other yet-to-be-released Ojama monsters. There is a lemon Ojama flying in the air, a purple Ojama watching over the others, a gray Ojama posing on top of a hill, and of course a lime Ojama standing in the foreground. And it was this particular Ojama that caught the attention of Rank 10 Yu-Gi-Oh, otherwise known as Rada, who asked Konami the ultimate question of where Ojama Lime was in the Archetype Archive for Ojama, a question that hasn't been formally answered to this day. And so Ojama Lime became a mainstay in Rada's channel, going on wacky adventures and appearing in random videos and skits and memes to try and answer the question of what happened to Ojama Lime. This captured the imagination of Rank 10's audience who eventually spread Ojama Line to a wider community to the point where now Ojama Line is an icon, not just for Radis channel, but for the entire meme community at Yu-Gi-Oh, who uses Ojama Lime as a punchline simply because he looks funny. But even though Konami hasn't come forward with an Ojama Lime card, or directly answered any questions about him, his fate has at least been implied in the artwork of several different cards featuring Ojama. So, what happened to Ojama Lime? 
he most likely died. Alongside all of the other unreleased Ojamas featured in Ojama Country, their skulls are present in the artwork for Solidary, which shows most of the living Ojamas standing in a graveyard of their own people, likely having been hunted to death by the Harpy Ladies. But even though Ojama Lion is no longer with us, he remains in the hearts and minds of Ojama fans across the world, as a quirky mascot for the deck that shows off its annoying but silly nature. And for as long as the deck remains a fan favorite archetype, people are always going to ask the question of where is Ojama Lime until one day it gets released. And boarding into number 4 is Eldlich the Golden Lord, a deck that can build up an impressive board of interactions while sitting behind a ton of floodgates that most decks are going to struggle to deal with, which makes it nearly impossible to break their board. What's that? And a main phase? And a battle phase? Banishing the entire field at number 4 is evenly matched, a trap card which has turned the phrase and a battle phase into a statement to be feared. You see, evenly matched is a trap card that you can only activate at the end of the battle phase, and forces your opponent to banish cards they control face down so they control the same number as you. But the real kicker is that evenly matched can be activated from the hand, making it an insane board breaking tool since you can just move to the battle phase without controlling any cards, activate it immediately from your hand, and then your opponent is forced to wipe away their entire field apart from one card since you technically control evenly. This means a resolved evenly match is game winning, because if your deck can't put up a spell at trap negate or a way to counter evenly before the end of the battle phase, you're left with pretty much nothing while your opponent gets the chance to combo off in main phase too. This became a huge meme because of the way phases work in Yu-Gi-Oh! You see, you have to declare every phase you're going to leave before you actually leave it, just in case your opponent wants to activate a card or effect within that phase, such as Nibiru the Primal Being, which is main phase only, and so you wouldn't be able to use it if your opponent could switch to the battle phase without warning. And so, during the main phase, if your opponent controls no cards and declares end of main phase, there's a really solid chance that they have evenly, leaving you in suspense as they enter the battle phase as you realize that your board might be getting cleared until they utter the phrase, end of battle phase. Just like how Nibiru made the phrase, was that your fifth summon into a horrifying sentence for Yu-Gi-Oh players, evenly matched has made it so end of main phase and end of battle phase are terrifying declarations that can lead you to losing games if you know what's about to happen. So much so that it's actually a fairly common tactic to end your main phase while you control no cards, even while you don't have evenly matched in hand, because some decks like Labyrinth and Runic don't really care about their first battle phase. And so this tactic is used to bait your opponent to dumping resources in order to play around evenly matched, just because they know that if they don't, it's likely they're going to lose the duel. This only adds to the fear that the end of main phases creates, because now you never really know if your opponent has evenly, or whether you're being baited into making a terrible play. As a competitive stable, Evenly Match is an incredibly strong card that'll be in people's side decks for years to come for how amazing its removal effect is. And as a meme, it's definitely the most frightening one on this list, unless you're terrified of Ojama Lime. And flipping into number 3 is Solemn Judgment, the face of counter traps that you put in your deck whenever you just don't want to deal with your opponent's cards. You see, the thing about Solemn Judgment is that it can negate any spell or trap card activation or negate the special summon of any monster but you have to pay half your life points in order to do so. This gives Solemn Judgment a wide range of cards that you can just say no to. If your opponent is going to Dark Ruler your board, you can just flip Solemn Judgment and say no. If your opponent is about to Synchro some of their boss monster, no they aren't. If they're trying to wipe your field with evenly match, the old man says no. Essentially, the old man saying no is a humorous way of telling your opponent that what they're trying to do isn't going to happen. Because sometimes in Yu-Gi-Oh, cards and effects will happen that you're just going to want to say no to because they're either unfair, overpowered, or sometimes a mix of both. And most cards that depict the old man usually have some kind of effect that allows you to say no to all different kinds of cards. Solemn Judgment can't negate monster effects, but Solemn Strike does so easily. And while Strike can't negate an emergency teleport, Solemn Warning is another way of letting you say no. And because the Solemn cards are so well loved and pop up so much in the competitive metagame, some Yu-Gi-Oh players have even taken to calling the god depicted in the Solemn cards, Solemn Johnson, the old man with infinite power who can say no to everything. Given how so many cards in the modern era have a ton of different effects, it's nice that in some circumstances you can just say no, that you don't need to read their effects or know what happens next because you're simply not going to allow that to happen. And it's all thanks to the insane power of Solemn Johnson. And drawn in number two is Monster Cardo. Drawn into number two is Monster Cardo. Drawn into number two, it's actually just spell card Berserker Soul. This card managed to reach meme status due to how it was used in the Dual Monsters anime. Because in the anime, Berserker Soul lets you, if you attack with a monster with 1500 less attack, draw a card. And if it was a monster, that monster with 1500 less attack could then make another attack. Then, after that monster was attacked again, you could draw another card, and if it was another monster, your monster could make another attack. 
and it's repeated over and over until you draw a non-monster card. This effect was used in order to deliver one of the most brutal beatdowns in anime history by Yama Yugi against Weevil Underwood during the Seal of Horror Calcos arc in the anime, where Yama Yugi won the duel after reducing Weevil's life points down to zero after attacking multiple times with Berserker Soul. But then, Yami gave into his rage, and even after Weevil's life points had been reduced to zero, Yami kept drawing cards, unleashing attack after attack on Weevil, uncaring for his well-being, and was only stopped after Teya begged the Pharaoh to let Weevil go. The English dub did an okay job of showing off his rage, but in the original Japanese version, which captured people's hearts, because instead of the quips that Yami did in the English dub, Yami was so embraced by his anger that he could only say two words. Monster Cardo. Now, unfortunately, despite how well-loved Berserker Soul is in the community, it doesn't really see any competitive play. Part of that is because of how its effect was changed in the TCG to only inflict 500 damage instead of allowing you to attack multiple times. But the main reason it doesn't see much use is just because it's a somewhat situational OTK tool that's not as reliable as something like Axis Kotaka or Borosort Dragon. But even though Berserker Soul doesn't see any competitive play, Draw Monster Cardo is still an omnipresent phrase in the community and is something you might hear whenever your opponent draws for turn, for effect, or potentially if they're about to go overkill and OTK your opponent with a ton of attack points. In fact, Weevil's beatdown is so well known that even more casual players and people who don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! are aware of it, simply because it's such a famous beatdown that was an astonishingly cool moment for any kid to watch. Berserker Soul might not see any play in the actual card game, but what it represents is still very much present in the modern game. You can still easily lose yourself in the power of your own cards and launch an insane OTK with your deck, to knock your opponent's life points down to zero several times over. And activating into number one as the most iconic meme on this list is Mirror Force, Magic Cylinder, and pretty much every other trap card in the game, because every one of them lets you say the magical phrase, you just activated my trap card. Trap cards have been an important part of Yu-Gi-Oh's identity, going so far back as a Legend of Blue-Eyes White Dragon, that helped differentiate it from the biggest competitor at the time, Magic the Gathering. And they've always been a neat feature of the game allowing you to prepare a set trap card for your opponent to step into, letting you feel like you're in complete control of the duel as they panic over what your set card could do. And in early Yu-Gi-Oh, trap cards saw common play, since they were some of the only ways you could interact with your opponent during their turn, and had some generically busted effects that warped the format at the time, which made cards like Mirror Force, Magic Cylinder, and Torrential Tribute staples, not just in playground strategies, but even in competitive meta decks where they be able to turn the tide of a duel in your favor. And that's exactly why, in the anime, trap cards were often so used in order to create suspense and drama, and just what a duelist set card could be, and how it could end up swinging the duel in their favor. Trap cards made the anime exciting, interesting, and showed duelists that no matter the situation, you could pull back a duel with a well-timed trap. And all of that suspense often culminated as soon as you heard the phrase, you just activated my trap card. This immortal phrase is one a ton of people remember due to how often it and warnings like it were repeated in the anime because of how pivotal and exciting these moments were. This led to the phrase becoming popular in both Yu-Gi-Oh! and non-Yu-Gi-Oh! meme circles alike, because it related to people's childhood memories of watching the anime and seeing Yu-Gi-Oh! Kaiba win duels thanks to a well-placed trap card, to the point where even the most casual fan of the game is going to understand the reference due to how widespread the meme is. What's even better is that trap cards are still a core part of the game even to this day. Because even though most decks rely on monsters and spell cards to make their plays, there are still a ton of trap cards that have stable status, that allow you to use this iconic phrase. And for as long as there is a playable trap card in Yu-Gi-Oh, people are going to reference the meme. In fact, even terrible trap cards that aren't fit for the modern meta will still find a way into people's decks just because they think it's cool to activate a mirror force in order to mirror their favorite characters, or just because they're some of their favorite cards from their childhood. Other than Exodia and Pot of Greed, You Just Activated My Trap Card is probably the most widespread Yu-Gi-Oh meme out there, and it's one that encapsulates people's love towards the game, the anime, and the surprise twists that come with both. It's an iconic phrase that's fun to say, and one that casual and competitive players alike share a shared love of. Alright, and that's the list. If you know of any more memes that we might have missed, or have any ideas for future videos just like this one, please let us know down in the comments below.